The code in which the universe is written is mathematics. I find it eternally fascinating how mathematics helps us to unlock the secrets of nature. Today I have a lovely example of how mathematics advances physics in a very practical way and my ambition is that at the end of this video you understand what this image has to do with physics. All physics that we currently use builds on a particular type of equation called a differential equation. These are equations equations which tell you how a quantity changes either in space or in time or both. Really all theories in physics use differential equations from quantum mechanics to fluid dynamics to general relativity. It's an interesting question whether that is because nature actually works this way or because it's what we're most likely to observe about nature but I digress. Let me tell you about this new paper. Differential equations don't just have one solution. They have infinitely many solutions that describe infinitely many cases. So how do you use them to make predictions for what you're interested in? Say you make an experiment with a laser. What do the photons do? How does water flow? How does a black hole behave? Well, you have to specify the details with what we call a boundary conditions. If you have photons in a reflecting box, for example, your boundary condition is that the photons need to bounce at the walls of the box. You need to know what the water is flowing across. And for a black hole, you need to know what it's surrounded by. Want to stabilize a wormhole? That's a boundary problem. Want to to understand zero point energy in the Casimir effect? That's a boundary problem. Want to know how dark matter is distributed in a galaxy? That's a boundary problem. I know that this is not the sort of fancy, inspirational pop science that many people are used to, but it's how physics works in practice. You have to figure out how to actually use these equations to describe something real. In some cases, there is a neat mathematical trick to solve the boundary problem and the authors of the new paper build on that. Think of a charged particle, say an electron in front of a conducting plate. What's the electric field? The conducting plate is a boundary condition and because the plate's conducting, we know that the electric field lines need to be perpendicular to it where they meet the plate. The easiest way to solve this boundary problem is to say, I imagine that there is a mirror charge with the opposite charge on the other side of the plate. The electric field lines will then automatically be perpendicular to the plate in the middle and that fulfills the boundary condition. You've solved the problem in the range that you care about by inventing a mirror charge in a place that isn't part of your problem. The authors of the new paper now ask, okay, but what if the boundary condition is more complicated? It's not a plain but any sort of surface. What's the mirror image that you need to get this done? What a physicist might do is say, okay, first thing I do is approximate this boundary with a polygon. But now if I want to use the mirror method, I must mirror all the boundaries on each other infinitely many times. It's a mirror labyrinth. It's a mess. I give up. Mathematicians instead say, we approximate the boundary with parts of circles. If the boundary has straight lines, well, that circles with infinite radius. So for the mathematicians, everything is circles. Circles, circles, and more circles. You could do this in higher dimensions, but that becomes very difficult to draw. So let's just stick with doing two dimensions, please. Now, the next thing they do is they say, we don't want these reflections going out all the way to infinity. So we put our boundary problem in the middle and then invert our reflections on the unit circle. This inversion just means that whenever you have a point at some distance d larger than one from the zero point of the coordinate system, you map it to one over d and the other way around. As an example, this is a square grid and this is the inversion of a square grid on the unit circle. 
pretty, isn't it? This inversion is basically a way to prevent infinities. And the cool thing about this inversion is that it maps circles to circles. This means that still in their maths, everything is circles. So they approximate everything with circles, make this inversion. It's still all circles. And then they do the reflections of circles on circles. The consequences are the reflections don't build up outward, but inward. This figure shows an example where you have a boundary that's given by these four circle arcs and all these circles you see here, those are the reflections of the boundaries on each other. The smaller the circle, the higher the number of the reflections. Okay, nice figure, but what was the point again? Right, remember the case of the one particle with its one mirror image? This method now gives you a way to calculate where you need to place the mirror charges for arbitrary shapes of boundaries in this inverted world. Then you undo this inversion, plug it into your differential equation, and you've solved the boundary problem. The general idea for this is not new. The basics go back 150 years or so, but the authors of the new paper have now generalized this for a large class of boundary problems. I don't blame you if you didn't understand the details. I'm not sure I understood them either. But the brief summary is draw circles until reality gives up. I'm telling you about this because it's a nice example of how science advances by the use of abstract mathematics. This could end up being a method like the use of the obscure mathematics of quaternions for rotations in video games, something with practical use that speeds up solutions. And if not, at least it looks pretty. Problems. I'm sure you have a few. But problem solving is a skill you can train, just like any other. I found that a simple and effective way to do this is with Brilliant. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to learn to think like an engineer, brush up your knowledge of algebra or want to learn coding in Python, Brilliant has you covered. It's an effective way to build up your knowledge and train your problem-solving skills. And you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.